hello everyone welcome to this video today we are just going to make a revision of this chapter light okay so we are just starting this video now okay so what is light light is a form of energy and uh, with the help of this light you are able to see the things that means the light rays will just fall on the object and there the reflection will occur and it will strike to your eye then you can see the object now there is a classification of these objects as luminous objects and non-luminous objects what are the luminous objects now the objects who have their own light source suppose for the example of the sun the stars electric bulb tube light torch candle fire these are all the example of luminous objects because they have their own light source right now there are some of the objects which are known as non-luminous objects because they don't have their own light. Whenever some of the light rays falls on them, then only the objects are visible. Otherwise, you can't be, uh, view those objects, right? Suppose you are just entering in a room where there is no light. So, you are not able to view any of the objects in the room. But when you are just switching on the uh, light bulb, then in that case the light rays are just coming from the luminous source that is from the light bulb and in all of the objects the light rays are reflected and finally all of the light rays are coming to your eye so that's why you are just able to view the objects surrounding of your room right so in this case we can see that the flower the chair table book trees are the planets human beings all of are the non-luminous objects because we don't have our own light right whenever the light will fall on this kind of objects they will scatter then only the objects will be visible okay now what is the nature of light now different scientists have performed different experiment with the nature of the light some of the scientists said that it is having the wave nature now as a light we know that it is one kind of electromagnetic waves that means it does not require any medium to propagate right with the wave nature of light we are able to understand or we are able to explain the concept of polarization the concept of interference of light but if we just assume that a light is a source of particle then we are not able to explain that right now there is a different group of scientists also they have uh, performed different experiment and they just conclude that light is having the particle nature right so light is composed of the particles that means the photons whenever the light rays is coming from a luminous source that means the photons are coming so with the help of this nature you are able to understand the concept of reflection the concept of refraction right so in that case you are just assuming that light travels in a straight line with a very high speed what is the speed of light the speed of light that is of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second or you can say it is of 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second right so now in this chapter we are just going to understand the particle nature of the light that means we are going to study the reflection now reflection and refraction both are needed for our syllabus so we'll study the uh, particle nature of light the wave nature of light will be studied in our class 12 there is a polarization interference diffraction lot of interesting things are there okay so now let's start what do you mean by refract uh, reflection of light suppose this is the process of sending back of light rays actually it is the definition suppose we sometimes plays with a ball now nah? we have just set the ball to the wall and it just comes back to us in the childhood even i had also played that game i was having a ball i just hit that ball on the wall and it just comes back to me now the same thing happens for a light ray whenever the light ray is just striking a mirror now so it just comes back to the same medium now in this case there is a diagram i have just given here suppose this medium is air so in this way the light rays is just coming to that of mirror and it is getting reflected back and in the same medium okay so this concept is known as a reflection as the light ray is getting reflected so that's why you are just able to view any objects image right so in plane mirror what the concept of plane mirror we have it's a one kind of very smooth surface 
where the image of an object can be formed the back side of it, it is having a silver coating and so that's why we can say that the light rays cannot pass through that of mirror okay it is getting reflected back now what will happen if there was no coating then whatever the image you are just getting it will be blurred okay you will not get a high contrast image suppose you are just watching on your mirror and as you can see suppose there are um, suppose uh, we have uh, for our houses we have some windows that are transparent right so in that case if you just see yourself suppose your phone screen also right there are uh, something is going on in your phone and in that screen you are just going to see yourself so your image is not clear then right so obviously whenever you want to get a perfect image obviously the back side of that surface should have a coating and when then you will get a full reflection of that particular object now for the mirror we have some properties that we are going to discuss now in this case i have placed one of the object that is of p that object is placed in front of the mirror so that's why i am getting an object like that so whether you can uh, see that of uh, the object and the image both are like different now because as you can see that their right hand side appears at the left hand side and their left hand side appears in the right hand side of the image so this property of the image formation in a plane mirror is known as a lateral inversion there the lateral inversion of the object object's image actually happens in this case two things you have to remember that the height of the object and the height of the image will be equals to same that means height of object that means of h of o should be equals to h of i you can see even the separated distance between the object and the mirror and the separated distance between the image and the mirror that will also be same for the case of a plane mirror so in plane mirror whatever the image you are just getting whether it is a real image or virtual image now for that there are the new, new two terms you are just getting that is the concept of real and virtual image what is a real image a real image is a one type of image of an object which can be placed on a screen you can place the real image on a screen suppose when you are just going to the theater to view a movie so in that case the image is on the screen na? so obviously this is a real image but whenever you are just looking yourself on front of the mirror then whatever the image you are getting in that mirror whether you can uh, place that image in any of the screen it can't be possible so that's why you can say that a real image can be placed on a screen but the virtual image cannot be placed on a screen so in this case whatever the image is formed in plane mirror that is a virtual image okay it is virtually erected image you are getting so for the image formation of plane mirror we are getting some of the properties that the height of the object is equals to height of the image point number 1 second point the distance of the object from the mirror is equals to the distance of the image from the mirror point 2 third one whatever the image you are just getting it's a virtually erected image right point 3 and the last one that is whenever the image sorry whenever the object will be placed in front of the plane mirror whatever the image you are getting it is laterally inverted that means the left side of the object will appears in the right side of the image and vice versa right now we are just moving to some important concept again now reflection of light rays is happening in the case of a plane mirror so in this case you can see in the diagram that there is an ray which is just uh, falling on the surface of the plane mirror and it is getting reflected back so what the ray of light is falling on the mirror surface that is known as a incident ray because it is incidenting on the mirror surface so after getting reflected it is just coming back to the same medium so the ray of light which is coming back after getting reflected from the mirror it is known as a reflected ray right so here this is the reflected ray so there is a point where the ray is getting reflected this point is known as point of incidence or you can say 
this is the point of reflection as well so at the point of incidence or at the point of reflection if you just draw a normal then you can see that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection both are equal right according to the laws of reflection we are able to say that what are the two statements first statement is the angle of incidence is equals to the angle of reflection that is of angle i is equals to angle r there is the first statement you can say or you can alter the number of statements as well the second statement is the incident ray the reflected ray and this normal as you can see they all lie in a same plane na? the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal they all lie in the same plane so this is the second statement i am not writing down this long statements okay now there are the two statements and this statements you are already studying from your class 8 okay now there are some of the examples in this case as you can see in that in the first diagram the incident angle that is equals to 35 degree so the reflected angle that will also be of 35 degree right because we know according to the laws of reflection the incidence angle and the reflected angle both will be equal now in the case of uh, second example we have that the incidence angle that is equals to 45 degree and the reflected angle it is also equals to 45 degree but in the third case there is no angle i have just written because the ray is falling at an angle of 90 degree the angle of incidence that is equals to 90 degree so obviously if the angle of incidence is 90 degree the angle of refraction will the angle of reflection will also be 90 degree so that's why you can see that whatever the path was followed by the incident ray the same path is followed by the reflected ray as well okay so it will go it will go back to the uh, in along the same path in the same medium whenever the incident angle is 90 degree now what is a spherical mirror a spherical mirror is having the reflected uh, reflecting surface and it is a part of a hollow sphere of glass right so here i have just taken an example of a concave mirror it is actually a part of a sphere how can i say that if i just try to complete the sphere na, it will look like this so this is like a concave mirror why i am saying it is a concave mirror because it is having the reflecting surface who looks like a cave so that's why it says that it is a concave mirror because it is having a concave surface as a reflecting part and the outward part this is having a silver coating which is protected by the paint okay now we are going to understand the convex mirror what is the convex mirror that is directly opposite to that of concave one because it is having the reflecting surface which is bulging outward the outward surface will be used as a reflecting surface the light rays will come from this direction okay to that of mirror i will show you the ray diagrams whatever is just forming now for the case of convex mirror the outward bulging part is used as a reflecting surface and the inward part is having the silver coating and it is protected by paint now there have an example of a shining steel spoon now whatever the cave part it have it works as a concave mirror and the outward bulging part which is very smooth it is works as a convex mirror now if a question is asked that which mirror is used as a magnifier so obviously the answer should be a concave mirror because concave mirror is having the property to magnify an image of an object but the convex mirror the convex mirror always forms a diminished image right but the convex mirror is very much useful now in uh, car parking or you can say in the in any of the shop there at the corner the convex mirror is placed because it is having a special property to form that diminished image convex mirror always forms the image that a virtual in nature i will just tell you with the help of the ray diagrams why the convex mirror is forming the virtual image but the concave mirror is uh, very much special because it can form the real image as well as the virtual image we'll study six cases for concave mirror where five cases will be where the real image is forming but only one case for concave mirror will you have where the virtual image is forming for the convex mirror we'll just study only two cases and in both of the cases 
it will just forming a diminished virtual image which will be erected in nature whenever the real image will be formed it will it will always be inverted but whenever the erected virtual image will be formed it will always be straight upright okay now we are just going to understand that uh, some of the concept of uh, concave mirror as well as for convex mirror now in that case i'm just going to draw the ray diagrams now one of the ray diagrams i'm just drawing that are for a concave mirror this is a concave mirror huh? that the outward portion is having the silver coating now this is this concave mirror is a part of a sphere suppose we are just assuming that this concave mirror is a part of a sphere so obviously the sphere should have some center so in this case the center is named as c this c is known as a center of curvature right this c is known as center of curvature now there is a linear aperture of the mirror this is the linear aperture of the mirror it can be named as ab so ab is the linear aperture so obviously it should have some midpoint the midpoint of the linear aperture is named as p p for pole remember that pole is the midpoint of this linear aperture now if you join this two points that means the center of curvature and the pole with a line i'm just joining them with a line okay now my drawing is very bad now okay now the center of curvature and the pole are joined with a line this axis is known as a principal axis right on this principal axis you will place an object and you will get an image also on this axis if you are getting a real image then it will be inverted in nature if you are getting a virtual image it will be but it will be erected in nature now there is a midpoint of the center of curvature and the pole that is a focus right so in that case we can say that this is the focus now there is some interesting part i hope the concept of circle is clear by everyone because the distance between the center of curvature and the pole that is equals to the radius of this curvature so in this case r is what r is actually the radius of curvature right r is the radius of curvature now in this case there is a separated distance between the f and b what is f here f is actually the focus remember that f is actually the focus and p is the pole now what is the separated distance between the focus and the pole that is actually the focal length now what you can see from this diagram that there is a relation between the radius of curvature and the pole and the focus now what's the relation is that the radius of curvature is twice of the focal length or you can say the focal length is equals to half of the radius of curvature now if i just give you a one small question that the radius of curvature of a concave mirror that is equals to 50 cm now what will be the value of the focal length the focal length is equals to half of the radius of curvature it is having the value of 50 divided by of 2 that is equals to 25 cm right sorry and uh, now so in this case the focal length is having the value of 25 cm now this is all about the parts of a concave mirror right now we are just going to find out all of the things of a convex mirror as well now if we are just making one of the convex mirror the convex mirror will look like this where the inward part will having the silver coating and the outward uh, outward bulging part is the reflecting surface for this mirror so it is also the part of a sphere na it is also the part of a sphere so it should have the center this is known as the center of curvature and i'm just writing down as c so here is also the linear aperture that is of ab so it should have the midpoint that is equals to p what is p p is the pole so if we just joining them that is the pole and the center of curvature with a line it is forming what it is forming a principal axis right now on this principal axis in this side the object is placed a luminous object is placed and you are just getting the image in the other side of this i will just uh, uh, help you to draw the ray diagrams 
for both of the mirrors okay there are some certain rules that you have to understand at first to draw the ray diagrams now before that what is the midpoint of this pole and center of curvature that is actually that point this is the f what is f f is actually the focus remember that f is actually the focus c is what c is the center of curvature right c is the center of curvature and p is what p is the pole so you can say one thing that the distance between the pole and the center of curvature that is actually the radius of curvature and the distance between the pole and the focus that is actually the focal length so obviously the focal length is equals to half of the radius of curvature or you can say the radius of curvature is equals to twice of the focal length right up to that point we have just completed in our class so we are just finishing at this point now the rest of the now the rest of the part we will just study in our class so all the best